recording. Thank you. You're a host All too right. now, Carrie. Oh, okay. Nice. <laughs> um, who's next? Who's next? I can speak. Okay. Hello. So I'm Sofia Lizio, and I'm connecting from Greece, south of Greece, actually. Uh, I I apologize. My son is around, so you will see him. He's three years old. So I'm officially in holiday still, but um, Professor Wexler sent me the link uh, to to join and uh, made me aware of this. So I'm really I'm really happy I made it. Um, I'm a lawyer in Greece and Italy, and uh, I attended a Master of Laws in LLM at the University of Puerto Rico, uh, and that's where I met uh, Professor Wexler, and I, I managed with great success to write my final dissertation thesis on therapeutic jurisprudence with him. So it was an honor to discover the subject and be able to develop it and be part of the research and the development of itself. So um, yeah, that's how we met and that's how I, I got really involved in therapeutic jurisprudence. I am I'm a big fan of it and I'm trying to, to keep in touch and be part of uh, the next steps. So um, thanks for, for organizing this and uh, I am, I'm glad to be part of it. Uh, I, I'm not sure I'll be able to be on uh, the, the whole uh, hour because uh, it's 8 p.m. here, so uh, I might have to leave in about 40 minutes. But uh, yeah, for sure, uh, I'm, I'm very glad to be here. Thank you. We're glad that you are here, and it's fine if you have, if anyone has to leave early, that's fine. Um, Muhammad, I think you're next. Thank you very much. My name is Muhammad Ahmed Muni. And I'm very happy to join this session, particularly I am seeing my mentor, Dr. Wexler, and I'm here to listen to him. And also to Professor J. Kim Wright, with whom I have a lot of conversation about, you know, therapeutic jurisprudence. I am basically from Pakistan and uh, an additional district and sessions judge here. My role is to, to I, uh, I mean, adjudicate the cases relating to murder, rape, and such like heinous offenses in which we have death penalty here in Pakistan. And on civil side, I am first appellate court. So I hear appeals from the civil judges, magistrates, rent tribunals, etc. And since last, uh, you can say around uh, two decades, I am in interaction with uh, Dr. Wexler on, on therapeutic jurisprudence. I have uh, written some articles on it under his guidance. And we are doing some translations of the TJ work in Pakistan. And we are very happy to uh, inform this audience that in Pakistan now TJ is slowly getting uh, attention of the uh, honorable superior courts in Pakistan. So I hope uh, this session will be very entertaining for, uh, for all of us. And I am happy to have live interaction with Dr. Wexler hours after so many years. Oh, wonderful. And yes, yeah, part of our conversation, it'd be nice to hear how Therapeutic Your Experience is doing in Pakistan and other countries around the world, too. Um, sure. Very nice. Uh, Elsa, you. would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, everybody. Um, so I'm Elsa. Nice to meet all of you. I'm joining completely out of the blue in um, that I listened to Professor Wright's conversation in Stellenbosch, she presented a seminar and uh, it really inspired me. I come from a background of property law and I did a, a PhD in property law using systems theory and complexity theory. And so the seminar really um, inspired me to learn as much as I can about integrative law. And so I sort of found my way here through the little community app. And so I'm sorry that I'm completely uh, a novice and just here out of the blue and a bit random, but yeah, I'm just thrilled to be here. So I'm South African, but uh, talking to you. Where are you here from? So I'm South African, but I'm based in London at the moment. Oh, okay. Very nice. But we're thrilled to have you here. <laughs> Thank uh, you. And Gabby. We can't hear you, Gabby. Let's see. It doesn't look like you're on mute. There you are. Oh, it's coming. Uh, is it coming through now? Yes. Mm -hmm. 
OK, uh, we are on holiday at the moment in a small little seaside village, so I think the connectivity is not that great. Um, but I'm a magistrate in a family court in Weinberg, Cape Town, South Africa. And um, I do uh, child protection work in courts and um, parental conflict litigation. And I do try and use my position as a magistrate to preside over my cases in a compassionate way. In a compassionate way. So, um, yeah, that's who I am. Well, thank you. We're always glad to see you here, too. Um, David, I think this is the most international group we've ever had. I, <laughs> I'm really excited about this. Well, me too. And I, something that's very interesting is my longest contact here actually is with Judge uh, Amir Munir from Pakistan. Uh, for years and years and years, we've been in touch and all. Although I, I have met his brother in person, but I've never yet met, met him in, in, in person. Is that that's right? Me too. Now, but, uh, Me too. Like I've known him for a long, long, long time. How many? How many years has it been? That's really, really a long time, right? Um, right. Yeah, yeah. So um, well, that's great. I really, I guess I, uh, the others, I, I have, uh, I've, I've all met, um, and except for Elsa, who I'm happy to meet, uh, uh, to meet, to meet this time, uh, Sophia. Uh, I um, I had in my classes online for a year, and I felt like I knew her, and I was bothering her all the time for for um, you know getting me uh, some of my assignments. She was way way better at uh, at technology than than I am, as is everyone else here. Um, but I, <clears throat> she was a fantastic, fantastic uh, student. But I had her on, and I don't know if it was an official or unofficial you know, co-host or whatever of, of everything that, you know, that I did. Uh, but I finally met her in person uh, just very, very recently when she came to the University of Puerto Rico to see it as she was graduating from it. She, she, had, she had done a, a year long program um, and got uh, online and got credit, credit for that, but decided she would come and actually go to graduation um, I didn't go to her graduation, but I told her I haven't gone to any graduation, including including my own, and I and I wasn't wasn't going to do wasn't going to do that. But we we did spend time uh, in in Puerto Rico together, and finally, uh, and it really felt like uh, like I knew her when 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 I met her, and I did. But it's nice to have the the, the personal contact. So I'm hoping that Judge Amir and I will sometime uh, um, <clears throat> meet. And um, uh, Gabby and I have been in touch on uh, on the internet. I don't know that we've actually actually uh, met in person. I don't think so. Um, but it's but it, but yeah. So I'm really happy to be here. We got a small group, but uh, a good one, I think. Yeah. Well, I think it speaks for the power of collaboration you know that's even beyond the physical realm the collaborations that you've had extended over the years even without meeting in person that's i don't know why i just think that's pretty cool um and as for the i just want to make this comment before we go on even when we have small groups we uh publish these recordings so we end up sometimes we you never know how many people will watch this and how big your reach is um, I, I'll get emails from people. I got an email just from today from someone who commented on a video that was published last year with Integrative Lawyers of the World. So uh -huh. you just never know. Yeah. But so we're here to talk with you about therapeutic jurisprudence. Um, I don't even know. Does anyone have any direct comments or questions? Or Professor Wexler, would you like to just start? Um, by giving a brief overview or your thoughts on it. Well, I, I might, if anyone has, has actually seen the uh, the interview and has any questions or comments based on that, I think that would be a good place to start. Uh, people haven't seen it, then uh, uh, they, they, could, uh, they could see it later. But I, I would like to um, maybe focus a little bit on, on what we spoke about uh, in, uh, in that thing, I was very, very pleased with it, and very pleased with the questions and, 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 and the, the structure that that uh, 
that was brought to it. It was very, very impressive. A lot of people who have seen it have told me that was great and the interviewer was terrific, the interviewer, and, and that's, that's absolutely so. Uh, some of the questions I was kind of expecting, some of them I wasn't. Uh, some stuff developed uh, as I went along and I threw in, in something. I remember the thing about, about the, um, uh, the, the um, meeting with, uh, I don't know whose that is, but it's not That's that. me, and I don't know. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not be I didn't even know it was me, and I didn't know what device, where it was coming from. I could just hear it was coming from my room. So you may have saw that panic looked up. Yeah. But I think the thing that, 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 that came out, I think I said, I'm not sure I should say this. And then I said, okay, I will say this, is when, is when I went to... Um, uh, to consult with uh, um, uh, Nicholas Katzenbach, the Attorney General, when he was going up to Congress to speak on uh, some important bill, actually that had to do, I think, with with with, with drugs and, and and stuff like that. And um, I was asked I've heard, before I, I accompanied him to the the Congress. I came to his uh, office for for breakfast, and. Um, we were going, I was there myself and, and my boss, who was a seasoned older, older lawyer, easy to work with, a, a nice person. And um, at, what we had done is, is uh, Senator Dodd, who was running this show, had sent to, um, uh, to uh, the, the, the Attorney General a certain list of questions that he was gonna be interested in, in addressing or asking uh, the attorney general about during during the meeting, so I was given that th those questions, and I was asked to really research them and have an answer for 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 all of them. Um, and I researched it, and I did have answers for uh, for pretty much all of them. But there was one of them where um, there was some, uh, quite an ambiguity in one of the words or something in, in, the, um, in, in, in the question that was sent to us. And so when I was going over this, when I researched it, I said, well, geez, if, it's, if it means this, then the answer would be this. If it means that, then the answer would be, would be that. And that's how I left it. And, and, and so I had all my, my answers. I'd gone over them with my boss and, and uh, over them, all of them. There were about five or six uh, of, of the question, of questions. And uh, so at, at uh, breakfast, the attorney general asked me, you know, going over some of the things and I was giving the answers, the, the briefing and all that. And we came to that one. And I said, um, uh, well, this one was really ambiguous because if it meant X, then I think the answer really should be this. And, but if it meant Y, then I think the answer should be this. And, um, and then he shocked me by saying, well, why didn't someone just call Dodd and ask him what he meant? And I was thinking, wow, you're allowed to do that? You know, I, I thought this is like, that's like cheating, you know? And I was viewing it as a 24 year old, like the, this was a take home exam, basically. And if it was a take home exam, I think I really would have, would have aced it. But if I, when I was in the real world, obviously he didn't want to necessarily hear the, the, the part that it, that didn't uh, apply to, to his work. And um, so I just thought it was a real learning experience for me. And I've mentioned it to my students many, many times, you know, that, that if, you, if you're thinking about this sort of in a real world context, then, 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 then um, some of these things take on a different kind of, of meaning. I do think that some kind of maturity is, is helpful for that though, that, you know. Um, but as I said, I think in the, in the, uh, 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 in the talk, uh, well, my boss was a seasoned attorney, and he thought it was okay. I don't know why why he didn't uh, suggest that we just call Senator Dodd and and find out about it. So, so I really um, that was something that I hadn't expected to say at all, but I but I was uh, but I did find um, uh, interesting. Some of the other things that were highlights for me, I guess, in that was was talking about a uh, uh, um, uh, question was about uh, some Canadian law. And, and, uh, and although I was a bit hesitant to speak about it, I, I, I did because, you know, and I had some idea of what it was. 
but I was really impressed by the fact that that um, um, Natalie De Rossier from uh, Canada, French French Canadian, um, had um, had written a, a lot on that, and what she had written really about about that case. She liked the way the case was resolved, partly because it really wasn't resolved. It was it was basically saying if in the future there's a big 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 um, uh, movement towards uh, uh, secession by Quebec and and uh, uh, if that happens, then we will all have to take this very seriously. And it really didn't say anything, but everyone thought that they won at the end of that case, unlike other cases where they said, you know, Quebec loses because they've misread these statutes and they've misread this and misread that, where, where it was really kind of an angry reaction to this. This one was one where everyone seemed to, uh, to think it was okay, um, even though it didn't really say, say very much. Um, and so um, uh, Natalie wrote on this and, and then uh, really started thinking, she kind of opened the door to the whole notion of, of appellate matters and TJ, appellate matters and, and, and TJ, even though that was a case of first, uh, first impression, whatever you call it, without, it hadn't been in the lower court. It was, it was taken as, uh, uh, as uh, they had a right to, uh, uh, to just take the case in the Supreme Court without it having, having uh, gone up to, through, through the ranks. Um, but she gave a lot of uh, advice about how the opinion was written and what was good about it. And that, it, it, you know, very often cases are written as, as um, a letter to the, uh, really like, a, like a, a congratulatory letter to the winner in a way. Because judges generally, if the briefs are good at least, then the winning brief often becomes usable as, uh, as the opinion. And the way in which that's written very often says, well, no, 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 so-and-so argued this, but has misread the statute and has done this and, and, and those sorts of things. And we know as lawyers that that doesn't mean they really misread the statute. But if it was a, a case that, that had a lot of, of public attention and might be in the, in the news and, 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 and lay people may be reading it and certainly uh, people involved in, in, in the uh, secession movement uh, would be interested in, in actually reading it. They they might really think you know well we choose we chose a bad lawyer for this we shouldn't shouldn't have chosen your brother-in-law you know I I kind of warned you about, about about that but anyway what was interesting about it for me is that I got very interested in that and that kind of started me in a direction of looking at at um, at, at T J in the appellate arena and I started writing some stuff about that that I never would have before. And one of the things that I most liked about, about TJ is how, you know, it's not surprising when, when you're an old guy and you write a lot of stuff and people read some of it and they'll, they'll cite some of it and all that, well, well that and that's great. Uh, but what, what people may not realize is how very often, certainly in my case, and I'm sure in, in the case of, of others as well, um, it really, it really uh, changed my own direction. And that has happened many, many, many times in, uh, over the course of my, my career that someone, you know, 24 years old or something like that really, really changes my direction. Not completely or not, not for all time, but I will start writing something that I might not have written otherwise. So I was very interested in, in, in that part of, um, of the session, you know, as well. But I'll stop now and let-, let I was me... just going to say, can we talk about that a little bit more? Because now we have a whole like room full of practitioners from around the world. And that conversation really highlighted the power of words and therapeutic jurisprudence taking into account the effect of the words that we use as lawyers and leaders. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know when we had that conversation, you and I joked about how, you know, sometimes that it feels good to write that very dramatic and language that, you know, the other side is full of vitriol and all these nice words, but when you send it, are you helping the situation or inflaming it? Um, does anyone have like comments or experience of reading something that 
whether it's an opinion or a letter from opposing counsel or someone you're collaborating with, an experience where, let's just say, it wasn't aligned with therapeutic jurisprudence and what the effect was, and have you noted an experience where the words were aligned with therapeutic jurisprudence and the effect that it had? Um, so, uh, thank you, Dr. Wexler. Uh, may, may I start? Yes, yes. Uh, okay. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, it's very good to uh, uh, get update from Dr. Wexler about he has actually started TJ. So when I came into interaction with Dr. Wexler uh, back in, uh, perhaps it was 2005, at that time, I was a magistrate in Pakistan. So magistrates are basically to uh, decide cases of, you can say, theft cases, robbery cases, or you can say the, uh, what you call the misdemeanor or something like that. At that time, uh, I was reading uh, our own laws uh, that deal with the uh, with the pro uh, with, with sending the accused or the defendant to probation. So I discussed this thing with Dr. Waxer that uh, how I can uh, link up therapeutic jurisprudence with our own criminal laws, particularly with reference to uh, children or the juveniles. So by uh, having understanding of TJ literature uh, created by Dr. Waxer and so many other uh, TJ leaders, I started to practice uh, the TJ thing in my own courtroom. And what I did was that I, I tried to use the TJ terminology. I tried to use, uh, have more interaction and direct communication with the, with, the, with the child in court, with the parents of that child, with the probation officer. And then we try to have a plan, rehabilitation plan of that child. I mean, whatever was the case uh, of that child. So what happened was that when I did all that thing, I send the child on probation under the behavioral contract. Then after a few months, that child came back to my court with his father and, and a person who actually employed that child who was actually uneducated. And he said, I have hired him uh, in my shop and he works there with me now. So a child who was doing something wrong or who has done some uh, theft or something like, something like that, he actually rehabilitated himself with the help of the court. So this was start of the TJ uh, in my court. I, and I am doing this thing since then and try to apply different TJ principles uh, at different situations whenever they came before me. It is not possible to apply TJ on every situation. So this is one way I do it. The other way was that I have seen some written uh, uh, written briefs by the lawyers with respect to the language they use to, to, to uh, represent, for example, a lunatic. We call it lunatic who is actually a person, intellectually challenged person, right? So when I saw the written word lunatic, I again found that the language is also very important as far as the TJ is concerned. So instead of calling that person a lunatic, I started to use the word intellectually challenged. And then I also discussed this thing with the lawyers that please don't use these harsh words for those persons who are in before us. Actually, this affects their dignity. So I found that the language also is very relevant when we have to apply TJ as a comprehensive law movement, you can see, right? So this was the second thing where I started to find out certain words which, which I found as anti-therapeutic after reading the literature of TJ. So this was the second thing. The third thing which, uh, which I, my father and my brother uh, are doing here in Pakistan, it is that we actually started writing brief articles on TJ. And then we also try to translate some of the uh, basic documents on TJ, which were authored by Dr. Wexler. So they have been published here in Pakistan. So this way we are slowly taking up this movement. And what happened after uh, this 15 or 17 years work under the mentorship of uh, Dr. Baxler, that one day uh, an honorable Supreme Court judge was uh, 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 making a speech at some forum. And he said that I wanted to use therapeutic jurisprudence for, uh, I mean, the future decisions relating to, you know, different, maybe the children law, 
or maybe for uh, some family uh, cases so that was very much inspiring uh, for the whole uh, you can say legal community in pakistan that when when the word tj is used by a judge of the supreme court definitely it will create an impact and people will try to find out what is the tj so this is the way how we are introducing and mainstreaming the therapeutic jurisprudence in pakistan i have also uh, made some papers around uh, around i mean in different countries where i took the topic of therapeutic jurisprudence and the criminal law juvenile law family law and probation law under those uh, papers which i presented so that was also a good experience for me this way i am uh, slowly moving forward and i hope that the, uh, yes one more thing sorry pakistan is basically an islamic uh, republic right so in our constitution it is mentioned that every law should have been interpreted under the jur islamic jurisprudence so i am also trying to find out the relationship between the therapeutic jurisprudence philosophy and the islamic jurisprudence so what are the common points between the two so i discussed something with professor waxer and he he appreciated this thing that at least we can discuss those things which are common and which can be uh, you know uh, uh, taken up together without you know infringing the islamic aspect of our jurisprudence so this is in our law that we have to move like this so there are so many therapeutic uh, things in our laws and i hope that slowly when it will be a movement and so many people will be doing on it something in this country hopefully we will be more closer to each other thank you for uh, listening me this much yeah i was so impressed with so much of uh, of what you've done and and uh, over the years he sent me uh, copies of some of his judgments and and opinions and and often he he tries to talk to the the participants themselves and says i'm really writing this you know for you to understand you know why we're doing this and what's important about all of this very you know very very um a uh, potent kind of uh, of work and 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 of course being able to, to to do some of this work in urdu is is, is so important because we've often seen how much language is 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 foreign to so many people in court and it, and it drives a real wedge between uh, between them so i've been really really uh, uh interested in that and i couldn't believe when some of my papers came out in urdu you know uh, <laughs> they're they're in the bibliography someplace i think but uh but that was that was great so so thank you yeah you know as if we can pick up on this a little bit here too um on possibly giving some examples of you say like tj terminology and and the reason why i'm asking is especially for younger lawyers who may be listening to this a lot of times we learn our voice and how to write from the senior lawyers we're paired with and you pick up the pattern from those lawyers so maybe it'd be nice to show is there a place where we can either through here some examples of how we would say things using a tj terminology or way or can you point us to some place um maybe a therapeutic your students website or a resource people can go to and gabby i see you have your hand raised so we can go ahead and share uh sorry thank you asked the question and i think that's more for professor wexler to answer but i just want okay, to here. from the south african perspective that um what's very helpful is the legislation and that that's a really um important shift in a country when the laws themselves are changed and the terminology so for example i don't know can you hear me everyone i can now yes you're can still you faint me? you're still faint okay we can hear you all right um Better. so um for example since 2010 we have the child justice act where we now speak about children in conflict with the law we don't speak about juvenile delinquents or criminals so that's one example of a therapeutic um, phrase to speak about children in conflict with the law rather than uh, juvenile delinquents um, and so the children the child justice act 
which came into power in 2010, has completely transformed the way the courts deal with children in conflict with the law. And um, it's within that, that legislation, there are options for diversion out of the criminal justice system and into programs, behavioral programs, therapeutic programs. And then also there's no record kept of that child's um, interaction with the law. So those children don't go into adulthood with um, a record, a criminal record. And then there's the Children's Act, which is the act which I function under. And that um, speaks about that in, in the act, there are sections that say that in every matter pertaining to the child, the best interests of the child have to be uh, paramount, which is in our constitution as well. Um, and our constitution is the highest law in our land. And then also it speaks about how our children's courts has to be conducted in a manner which is non-confrontational and reconciliatory. So it helps a lot in different countries if the legislation itself, which um, from Professor Wexler, I learned that actually talks about the wine bottle. The wine bottles themselves are um, the statutes and they exist and they give magistrates the freedom to apply the law in a very therapeutic way. Whether they do or not, that's another story. So um, again, it's like whether the, we've got the wine bottles, but have we got the wine? And so I just wanted to add that, that that's like, um, maybe that's going to happen beyond our lifetime in each of our nations, that the legislators are actually going to start incorporating therapeutic jurisprudence into the, act, the laws that govern the way courts are run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's very 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 interesting, and I'd like to um, to notice right here uh, because she wasn't here during that the, the, the remarks I made. We we now have Angeli Grimm, um, who has joined us. Uh, I have not met her yet. Uh, we've been in touch over just a couple times, but over a, a span of, of several years, and uh, now she happens to be in Puerto Rico, and we're we're actually going to get together. Um, uh, in, 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 a, in, a, in a couple of days. I'm delighted she's here. But one of the, the, the things that, that, that uh, I had said earlier is how delighted I am when my own work gets, gets changed uh, by someone much younger than I. Of course, everyone's much younger than me now. But, but, um, but in any event, um, my contact with Angeli started a few years ago when she te texted me a about something she wanted to do, and she had read some some blog I had written on on um, 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 what was it on on um, uh, expungement, and um, and then she had some questions about how this could be extended to other other uh, areas, and I said, well, you know, it just depends on on um, what remarks are made. Um, um, and there can be therapeutic stuff going on in, in, in something, but if it doesn't hit on the right thing, it may not be, be right. But anyway, she, she ended up doing this fantastic um, uh, bachelor's level um, thesis just recently um, on, on um, the importance of, of TJ stuff getting into the, the community generally. Yeah. Well, I was so impressed with that I took a slightly different approach, which I thought was was was, was going to be more more it was going to be easier to uh, to implement. I really talked about how judicial state instead of trying to reach the the outside world with with, with what's happened here, which is okay, but but the real thing that people are trying to do if they're if they have statements coming from from a judge is to see whether those statements might be usable actually as like a, a uh, reference, an implicit reference letter by the judge. That depends on what they're saying, and it depends also at, at what level. So if we're talking about expungement, I don't think someone who's, who's, whose record has been expunged is going to be likely, he or she may feel delighted about what the judge has said about him or her. Uh, but isn't likely to say, oh, I want to bring this up and show this to 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 an employee, pr prospective employer or, or a landlord or something like that, because 
the, the criminal record need not be known, known by that person. And, and, uh, and probably uh, the person has been years already before the expungement working out there. And, 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 and so I didn't think that those remarks would, would be used um, in the expungement pro process itself. But there are many, many, many other situations where this can be used when someone's on probation and, and, uh, and lots of stuff like that. So really with, with uh, Anjali's uh, um, work that, that got me really thinking about how others, others can be, can be um, party to this, I recently wrote a blog about, about um, extending these remarks to, um, to, to situations where someone does have a record, so they can't hide that record, uh, but, but in the process of that, they can they can have a judge a, a, a judge quoting a probation officer and how how great the person has been and how the person has picked up their work and done all sorts of things that might be really impressive to a potential employer or landlord or or, or that sort of thing. And I don't know that I ever would have gotten to that without uh, without knowing uh, Angeli. And I hope she'll come on and. Uh, and tell us something about herself, because I know she's in her early 20s, as I remember. And um, this was a, a thesis that she did um, a year or so ago. And, um, and that was one that really, really, uh, you know, changed my direction. I've been assigning her stuff to some of my students, and uh, it's been really great. Angelie, would you like to join us? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I can introduce myself quickly. Sorry, I'm not going to turn on my camera. Can you hear me, though? Yeah, we can hear yeah. you. Can you hear me? We still we can. We can hear you. I don't and know. I did my best. And now I'm not hearing you. We can hear you. Oh, I can hear Um. Should I keep going? Okay, yes. yeah. So I did my bachelor's thesis in Amsterdam, and my my bachelor's was in. Oh my God! Sorry, that was thunder. Oh well, no! We have it right here too. We may be, we may in be offline. Politics, for psychology, law, and economics. So, um, so I had to combine for my bachelor's thesis. I had to combine law and psychology, and. Just coincidentally, I stumbled upon yeah. therapeutic jurisprudence and I just really found it so fascinating. And I'm anything, any system. Um, and that made me really just get into it. And so much that's been done, but. Um, David has a lot of reading and he's being so communicative and helpful that is part of it. We got, I think, about 70% of what you were saying. Some of it goes on and off. Yeah, uh, we could hear about 70%. Um, and then you're breaking off a little bit, but we are awfully glad that you're here. How exciting it is to have your, you know, to see, I don't <laughs> If I was a young student or if I was in my 20s doing work like that and a professor said something to me, like about me, like you did to Angela, you that would have made my year. So I hope you know, Angela sees that. Um, I want to be mindful of our time. We're coming up at the 45 minute mark. Is, does anyone else have any questions or comments that they would like us to address? And when I say like us to address, I mean like Professor Wexler to address. I well, might just I have some something more to say before before but, we go if if you want. Because yes, I, I think one of the other things that I found really interesting in in, in, um, in our discussion earlier was uh, I remember looking for uh, a work that was, I said, for me, it was half a day old because I, it had just come to my attention. It may have been out for a little while. It came to my attention 
uh, that someone, uh, John, uh, Jonathan Campbell, had written a piece bringing, and this was mar largely in, 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 in a clinical situation in law school, and I believe he is in, in, in South Africa, and um, he wrote something on, on TJ and legal clinics, but largely with a, with a, um, with a civil uh, a point of view, bankruptcy and matters like that. And um, he tried to bring together TJ and preventive law and, and, um, and, and other very, very similar kinds of things. And he wrote a really terrific, terrific piece. Um, and it is on our bibliography now, if you look up, uh, and that's the other thing I wanna talk about in a minute is just the, the resources. Um, but when I said this is half, half a day old for me, um, what I wanted to point out is that so many pieces are coming out that are so great, so, so good uh, all the time. And um, you know, just recently, I asked my assistant to 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 um, put in the biblio several different uh, different different pieces. Um, I can mention them if you want, but but um, but the point is there there are many 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 of them, and and um, it's really important, I think, to 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 really have a community. I say TJ is not something like all these other vectors. They're not something that you just learn about and memorize and use it's they're also always leading to something else and, and and evolving and that's really important that they that they evolve and and um in order to do that i think you really have to have to be part of some of the resources like we have a tj list service very very important and active and we have a, a tj bibliography that can be certain that we're trying to keep up to up to date and it and, and you can search it by by uh, author and title and this and this and very often full text and um, very very you know very helpful very 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 useful materials so it's, it's an essential for for people who are doing research in uh in the area we also have a terrific blog and and um, that also is both of those things are actually available even without membership in the ISTJ, um, and so it's intltj.com can get you to to there, and and those resources are very very uh, very very important. So just in the, in the last couple of days, I've been impressed by. I'm going to just see if I can mention some of these. Uh, something that was done by Judge. Um, um, uh, J Jamie uh, Houston, I'm not sure how she pronounces her, her last name, and it's uh, uh, an excellent, excellent piece called the, uh, um, the Compassionate Court Reforming the, um, the Judiciary this way and that or something something like something like that but it but it's but it's on the bibliography and it's short and it's it's really really excellent she's a judge very very fine piece um there's um a really great piece out of out of israel that challenges a little bit the 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 standard thing that that uh, tj uh does not um take precedence of therapeutic goals do not take precedence over legal stuff and that's been a for sure for sure for sure until this article that just came out where she gives some examples of where they call something like uh uh there um, i don't know what what it's what what they call it but they call it a kind of a radical tj where in some instances they think actually the the um uh, the therapeutic goal should trump some other kind of goal. It was a very interesting uh, example that she gave, and I'm still thinking about it. And it's a it's a wonderful piece, and it's called uh, Two Roads Merge: The Intersection of Well Between Mental Health and Legal Legal um, Discourse, something like that. I, but but if you look up in in the um, if you just put in Inbar, I-N-B-A-R, which is her first name, and she writes with Taligal, either Inbal, Inbal, or or Taligal. You, you'll find that it's a very, very interesting, very neat piece, and um, and there's another one by by Paula uh, uh, Schaefer, 
um, called um, uh, Lawyers as, as Caregivers. Very, very interesting piece. And she draws on medicine and law. She talks, and there's some things in there a little bit surprising too about maybe there's sometimes when you don't really tell everyone all the truth, either in medicine or in law. So there are things that are, that are kind of, you look at this and say, well, I have to think about that. Uh, but it's very, very interesting, um, um, uh, her piece. And, um, you know, she's excited about it because the new ABA standards and all this that, that, that require, you know, discussions of identity and, 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 and uh, uh, cultural uh, competence and all those kinds of things. And that, in fact, my university is having something on tonight that I'm not going to be able to get to, but it's on teaching this because the ABA expects it now of law students to be to be versed in this and they they uh they want the faculty to know something about it as well i feel in a pretty good spot there ha having done tj compared to people who are maybe doing mostly uh things very different from that uh but that also has its real challenges we had a retreat not long ago of, about this and we're talking about it and while we're talking about it, we have all this stuff happening with the uh, don't say gay bill and the, this stuff, and we're going to lock you up and we're going to burn your books and all this kind of stuff. So, you know, it's, I mean, I still think we have to really work on this and, and try, but, it, but it's, uh, it's in a very, very different context now with, uh, with the horrible uh, divisions that we're, that we're seeing in, uh, uh, certainly in the U.S. and I don't know uh, where else, so. Well, those are my two cents now. That's, uh, can you, before we go, can you uh, give the website address again one more time for the blog? Yeah, and yeah. it goes for, it's really for International Society, but it, but it, but it, it's like International TJ. I-N-T-L-T-J, that's International TJ, like I-N-T-L-T-J dot C-O-M, that's it, dot com. And right, if you go there, um, you can find, without further ado, you can find the blog and you can just go on and click and, and join the blog and they'll start sending it to you. Very good blogs. And uh, the Biblio is also open uh, to everyone, whether you're a member of the society or, or not. Uh, there are a couple of things that are really for members only, um, a, a TJ forum and, and, and those kinds of things. But uh, we're certainly anxious to have people using those things and, and joining if, uh, if possible. And as I said, the more that we, we do of this and interact with each other as well, um, I think the better off we're all going to be. I, I think so, too. And I hope, you know, just as you were talking about the division and uh, anger and emotions in different societies and the troubles, well, you know, it seems like the adversarial system of lawyering seeped into the way people talk to each other, seeped into the media and things like that. Maybe the therapeutic justice, the therapeutic jurisprudence way of speaking will slowly replace that adversarial style even into the me media and community. Well, and, we're certainly hope, hopeful that. Yeah. And, and Shelley Kirsten, who's, who's, the, who's the chair um, at the moment of the ISTJ, Canadian uh, lawyer and law professor at, at York. She's been a specialist in, in, in family law and in legal writing, and she's taken the legal writing part of it into a real TJ way, and especially lawyers talking to each other instead of inflaming each other, how they might co comment as, as well, you know? So she's done really, really good work. And, um, Of her stuff. Someone that can let them down a little bit easier. And th that comes also from, um, from uh, TJ in, in Health Law, where Kathy Sermonello wrote something on um, um, how you say, you know, like last chance therapies that you may, that may not be insured because they're not really uh, approved yet by everything, but you know, how, how uh, you deal with uh, saying no in, 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 in 
telling people, I'm sorry, we can't give you a, a, uh, a last chance therapy. But, um, <laughs> you know, it's, how, how, how you break that news, I guess, is what, uh, is what, is what that's about. Um, not that it really cheers people up at the end, but it's, it's less, uh, less, you know, bothersome than if you're simply told, sorry, you're, you don't qualify and you're out of here and that's too bad. So she has, she has a piece on that from some, from some time ago. So I think people are worried about, are thinking about all this. And I think you're quite right. I mean, maybe we really can move this from the adversary type of stuff. My students have said, why can't we learn about this earlier? They learn about it if they do in their clinical programs and all that. There's been a hope that they can get first year Legal, legal writing and analysis that might do a little bit of introduction of TJ and related things in the curriculum so people will get used to it then, maybe bring it into their other courses. So um, that stuff, um, uh, I do think there's some hope that we can, we can, we can move in, uh, in that direction anyway. I think so too, and I hope so. Well, thank you, uh, Professor Wexler, for being part of our conversation series and thank you for everyone for joining us and i think one of the things the takeaway is therapeutic jurisprudence it's it it can be it's not just a singular practice it's it's a mindset and skill set and terminology set that can be used in any practice area that you do yes um, and there are lots so. of examples of all that, that that's yeah really cool. It's a method, a method of thinking. And then once you have the method, you know what it is and you, you know, have a name for it and, 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 and resources and all that stuff, you're going to see that a lot of people do a lot of this implicitly because they're good people. Uh, but once you have this other, the, 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 the framework and, and, and the other stuff to go with it, I say you're going to see it more readily and more powerfully in what you do. In what you do. And I think that applies to all of these uh, related vectors of the integrative law movement. So, uh, yeah. Thank you for joining us and thank, thank everyone here who joined us today. Um, it was really nice talking about this. And I have one more thing. I, I, oh, if, I, if I can interrupt, I just want to thank David for his long work. And um, and one of the things that I noticed, even on this call, is that you read all of those um, papers. Um, it's just you know, like like for people who write papers to have to have someone read them is a yeah. is wonderful enough. <laughs> but for <laughs> for you as um, a leader um, in and you know bringing this work to read the papers is uh, particularly impressive. Yeah, that's good. Well, it, uh, you know, I don't read them all. And I don't read all of all of them, you know, but but uh, at least I try and keep up with it and to circulate them and get them out there because it's it's uh, it, it belongs to everyone, you know, and, and, and so, you know, these people deserve to to uh, to have their insights uh, mentioned and and uh, and that that's how it all grows. So as I said, a couple of these things that kind of surprised me, like you don't have to really tell the truth in some situations. I'm anxious to read that and think about it, or that there are certain cases where the therapeutic should trump the um, the actual, um, you know, um, the legal kind of kind of thing. It was such an interesting case that she mentioned. It was about someone who was who was testifying in a mental health thing about a sexual assault case. And the person testifying it was was a credible, um, a credible witness who had who had a good background and all, and, and so he was a accredited professional, and and this uh, woman said I refuse to really go to town on him on his credentials. I'm not going to be nasty about his credentials and destroy him that way. Um, when he's just trying to come up with, a, with something that's gonna help some sexual assault victim and all that kind of stuff. And I can, I can question him about some other stuff, but I'm not gonna come down you know, as hard as you possibly can in a case like that. 
So I'm not doing the the. Uh, uh, I forget exactly what, uh, what what she thought she was moving away from, but it was it was a very powerful thing to read as well, and, and it kind of makes you think. Well, yeah, that makes that makes some sense that someone decides they're going to go easy on someone uh, when they could try and sort of embarrass the hell out of them or destroy them if they, uh, you know, if they really went at it uh, in in a very very nasty way. Um, so that is something mm. to think of. And that last I'm paper, not I'm sure if I just froze up. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I think we lost Carrie there for a moment. I think she's frozen up. Oh, um, oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, thought, but, I thought she was just, she was just very, very irritated at my example. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, well, I think um, you've been great and what you've been doing and, and bringing everything together and, and, and the professionalism of uh, of the the uh, integrative law movement is is really impressive. And even when you yeah. say we're taking a break now to tell you about all about it, and where you can contribute, and what you should do, and all that, but it but it comes across very very well, and um, uh, I, I think it's a, it's a very impressive uh, outfit that you and. and from wherever in the world she is, and no one ever really quite knows, she's she's on the email right away and, <laughs> and, and doing everything. So it's been a pleasure for me really to do this. Thank you, David. And Carrie's back. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My internet just dropped. I'm like, oh, hey, so it got me back in time to say goodbye to everyone. <laughs> Thank you all for joining in. Goodbye, all. Okay. Thank you all Thanks for coming. Everyone. Great. Thank you so much. Bye -bye.